ladies and gents, and welcome to the f- the first ever after show podcast with Call Stars. Um, my name's Ian Benny, Henry Spenny, and I am your host, your solo host for today. But yeah, episode one, I am absolutely crapping my pants, not gonna lie to you. Um, I've had some experience with audio stuff, but you know, that was all over radio. You couldn't see my face. Um, whereas in now I'm completely exposed, not completely exposed, but you know what I mean. Um, we will be posting these videos to YouTube, so you'll be able to find us there at the After Show Podcast with Call Stars, and we're hoping to get them onto Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the platforms for podcasting as well sometime soon, and we'll keep you posted on that on our social medias. Now, um, in case any of you don't know what a podcast is, I'm just going to break this down for you, right? I'll take you a little walk through it all. A podcast is an episodic series of spoken word digital audio files that a user can download to a personal device for easy listening. A podcast series usually features one or more recurring hosts engaged in a discussion about a particular topic or current event. And for us, that particular topic is uh, theatre. Um, I, I would say musical theatre, but I mean, you never know where these chats may lead. And we just wanted to make this, you know, a really guest-based show. You never know who may we may end up having on you. So, um, yeah, this is a podcast with theatre at its core. Um, just to introduce myself a little bit, just in case any of you don't know who I am. Uh, my name is Yain Rees Bernie. I'm 22 years old. I'm getting old now. Um, I'm doing my MA in drama, University of South Wales. I've done a BA in theatre art drama. At University of South Wales again through uh, the Welsh language. So, yeah, I speak Welsh pretty obviously. Um, obviously, this is a Call Stars po- podcast. So, I joined Call Stars back in 2013. Yeah, 2013. Wow, eight, over eight, almost eight years now. Um, and King and I, the King and I was my first ever show with Call Stars. And um, my first ever musical was Sweeney Todd, which I did with my school, my comprehensive school. Um, I love theatre, plays, musicals. Um, I'm a big fan of the Baton Theatre as well. So, I mean, any suggestions on a musical you think I should listen to or play, um, I should read or, you know, anything like that, just send them to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, email address even. So, um, but yeah, again, as I mentioned earlier, YouTube, the After Show Podcast with Call Stars. You can find us on Twitter at capital C, capital C, O-L-S-T-A-R-S, that's Call Stars. You'll find us on Instagram at After Show Pod. We're on Facebook as well. That's the After Show Podcast with Call Stars. And again, as I mentioned, we will be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the podcast streaming platforms. Now, um, as again, as I've mentioned, this is the After Show Podcast with Call Stars. Uh, we will dive into who Call Stars are a little bit more later on with um, with a little segment I've got planned. But um, the basics is this. Call Stars, um, you know, we're a successful and rather well-known amateur theatre company based in um, Aberdeen, on the Kenantaf, in the South Wales Valleys. We stage three shows a year at the Colise- Coliseum Theatre, um, one pantomime and two musicals. Uh, you know, we also sing at charity events and take a lead in community activities throughout the year. And um, over the past five years, we've raised over £7,000 now for local charities. So, um, yeah, we have voluntary leads. Of, uh, you know, any money that gets made gets pumped back into future productions. Um, and you know what? Now that I've introduced myself and Call Stars, why don't I introduce our first guest? So um, for our first show, we thought, you know, why not let's just get straight into it. And have our first guest on, and you know what? I think I think we've I think we've uh, landed a good first guest here. I think I've known her now for some eleven years. Uh, we went to school together, same school years, same drama GCSE class and A level class. Uh, we're both members of Call Stars. She's been there longer than I have by almost double my stint, really. Um, she is the wonderful, the marvelous, the the crazily great cake making makeup extraordinaire, the one and only Megan Jones. Wow, that's an intro. That was that was a mouthful. I wrote that earlier. I was yeah. like, the crazily great cake making makeup extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I go that far. Oh, I don't know, mind. You're doing good for yourself. I'll say that. I mean, I try. I try. You've got to make a living somehow. 
But um, yeah, welcome to the podcast, Ned. Thank how, you very much for having me. How does it feel to be guest number one on episode number one? I am, you know, I'm very, very glad that you've asked me. Obviously, you had fun doing the radio show, so why not yes. take it for that? Why not? Let's let's try it on you instead. But um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, last time we had music as well, didn't we? Was it this time? Yes. We, we don't have that. Just we me and you. Press play, press play. <laughs> just chatting, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself to the people? Apart from yeah. being a makeup extraordinary, cake making <laughs> marvel. To be fair, yeah, I feel like that's where I stop. Covered. I <laughs> no. am a self-employed baker and beautician. I've been in Kosas for mm, it was 2007. Was that 14 years this year? I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I've been there for 14 years. I've done many a show. Then everything that I can. Obviously, when you're younger, you can't do all the adult shows. Yeah. Um, I live in Aberdeen. And that's me. That's that's as far as I go. Pretty plain. But I mean, you know, yeah, again, obviously you're saying about you've been in Corsair since 2007. You were yeah. what eight, eight is it? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I was eight when I started. I was I seven? I can't remember. Seven, yeah. But I think still I was seven or eight. That's that's still quite a yeah. young age, you know. Considering you're still here as well, you've pretty much grown up in Coastal, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I think oh. the last rehearsal we did, I kind of sat there and was like, "Oh, I'm the only one that did Coastal's youth, and I'm still here." Wow. Yeah, it was it was strange. The yeah. only one left. I am singing a bit about, the only a bit about John. <laughs> I'm still standing. Uh, mate, I'm not gonna lie. I've actually got a question that I haven't kind of mentioned to you in advance, so I'm putting you on the spot already. Okay. Now, um, if you had to introduce yourself or like, you know, whatever, using a musical, what would it be? Did, does that make sense? Like, oh. introduce yourself as a musical. What musical like represents you? Would you say kind of like oh presents my gosh, you? Yeah, that's so hard. Or you can go um, or any piece of theatre. It could be like a play, a, a dance show, or anything really. Right, okay. Oh my gosh, I gotta think quick. Um this is hard. It's Why a tricky one. I had to think I had to think myself. It took me a, it took me a couple of seconds. It, well, more okay, than a couple of seconds. So I'd have to go waitress, you know. Not a baby side of it. That's not that's not me. Yeah, yeah. But she's you know, she's a bit outgoing. She likes she likes to have a bit of fun, you know. And um, yeah, I'd I'd go waitress. It's I'm a funny movie. It's got a bit of a deep side, bacon. Bacon, yeah. Good effect. Yeah. Yeah, I think I get. I go for that. Oh, um, but yeah, talking about your time in Call Stars, you joined yeah. in two thousand seven, yeah. Mhm. Yeah. What was your What was the first show you have done with Call Stars? So it was Carrots, which was the first youth, well, Call Stars youth show. Yes, so, it was. Back in two thousand seven. I actually got the date. That's September the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth. Yeah. So, and it was that's, it was mad. We were all so young yeah. in there. I think the oldest was like thirteen. Wow, that's, I know that's insane, really. When you think, because they normally think of you, you do think of youngsters, but mm-hmm. you think of the the older bracket as well. But I think thirteen's the oldest. That's quite. That's quite yeah, insane. Yeah, we were a young, was. very very young cast on well, cast cast yeah. and chorus on stage. Yeah. And yeah, it was really fun. I still remember like some different like moves and like songs and stuff. We sang songs since. Yeah, but I tried looking for stuff on YouTube the other day, and you just can't find anything on it. It's like it's like yeah. the show doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Well, I I done some digging for you know just some research in general for the show, and like I had to message Derek as well. Um, uh, Derek is the director for Call Stars, and he had to send me some stuff as well because yeah, yeah, there's not a lot no. on there. I went on the Noda website, and um, everything, and there's you know no cast recordings. No. I could find nothing. It's just yeah. like it's just like it's never been a thing, and it definitely yeah. was. Yeah, well, yeah, I found that it's book music and lyrics by uh, Peter Canwell, but like I had to dig to find that. But yeah, oh, well, definitely, yeah. you know. But I think it's nice as well to do something less known as well as your first show. Oh, I was so different. Like I would, I never would have known what that show was, and like yeah. there's some really nice songs in it. Yeah, and like songs again that we've sung in like contests and stuff. Hmm. But no one's ever gonna know that for songs because no. they know what to be found. Yeah. It's a shame that there's no like full on cast recording with easy access yeah. that you don't have to dig, you know, on like Apple Music or Spotify or yeah. something like that yeah. where a lot of people tend to turn to music. But yeah, it's, it's not you... on YouTube or nothing. No. Do you do you know anything about the story as well, about the plot? Considering so it's, it's a well known show. Um Mr. Bernardo, 
I think yeah, I think it is Bernardo's is in like yeah. the charity shops, but that. Mm. Um, and it's about a lot of orphans. And then there's carrots, but carrot. Is it? Car- well, I think his name is carrots. Carrot. Yeah. And um, and it was played by a girl when we did it. I'm assuming mm. it was a boy though. I think. Um, and I think Bernardo adopts him. But he goes, the car right. goes to jail and everything. And he's oh. just, we're, we're, like, everyone's all friends on the streets of London. It's very cool. Very cool. The opening scene, like, it? everyone's, like, lying on the stage, really quiet. And then someone comes on, like, lights a little lantern. And, yeah, it was really cool. I loved it. That sounds like, it, it sounds like one of those shows that uh, there'll be a few of these we'll mention later on, I think, where when you kind of hear them, at, you hear about them at first, you're like, mm, I don't know if I'll enjoy you yeah. doing that. But when you do it, you're just so, mm-hmm. like, it, it grows on you a lot more than you expect it to, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, 100%. And, like, yeah. I wish I could, like, go back and watch it. I don't think I had a DVD. I don't even know if we did a DVD of it. Yeah. But I wish I could go back and watch it to see, like, the full plot and, like, remember yeah. everything. But, no, it was yeah. really it was really good fun. Now, I'm um, talking about firsts. Obviously, that was your first ever uh, show. Mm-hmm. Do you remember your first ever part you had with Call Stars as well? I do. Yes, it I was like Michael in Peter Pan. As in my, <laughs> as in the little boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why? Why not? I'm well. To be fair, you just said about carrots played by a girl, so yeah. You know, keeping I mean, keeping yeah. the traditional either. I think I actually I'm not gonna do it, but I think I do remember my first lines for that oh, show. Wow. I remember I had to come on Nana's back, and yeah. I was like riding on his back. Oh, that's awesome! So that's yeah. which which Peter Pan musical is that? Because I know there's a few different. I think, well, I think it's just Peter Pan musical, I think. We I, went to see it in, might it be Bath or was it Bristol? It was something we were doing the show, we went to see it. Um, and that's the only ever time that I've seen yeah. that version done. But yeah, it was really fun. We flew on stage. It was good fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah. But I think fly, flying on stage is something I've always wanted to do. I think mm-hmm. my, the first show I ever saw was uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in Cardiff. Cool. And seeing that car coming yeah. out. Yeah. Ever since seeing that, I've just want to. I want to fly out over the old mm-hmm. audience. And... I gotta oh, say, it's man. painful. But I can imagine. But... Was it a harness? Yeah. Yeah, harness oh. and a lot of padding. Did Did you have to wear the harness to the scene as well? Yeah, so oh. you kind of waddle on because you couldn't really walk tidy. <laughs> yeah. And then it was so I had Beth and John at the time. She was my kind of like string person. Yeah. And she had to like allow me, like let me go on stage because obviously yeah. I was. We were on the wires, so when we were walking, she had to kind of like feed it. And there was one that she didn't feed it as much, so I kind of went, oh! And I was like stuck. <laughs> and I was like trying to go forward. I was like, I need to go, I need to go. But yeah, it was, it was really good fun. I almost wanted to do it again, just so we could have a moment where somebody goes to walk and they fully oh, no, get was, completely pulled back. Like, That'd be good. But it, it was on my back, <laughs> luckily it wasn't on my neck, but I kind of walked and yeah. I was like, oh, I can't go anywhere. I can't move. <laughs> just a little Meg running on yeah. stage trying to get to a spot <laughs> on run. stage. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah, great that fun, that, is it? Yeah. Am I right in saying it was the Peter Pan that's got the um song Come Away in it? Yes. Yes, it's the one I think. Uh Peter Pan, a British musical, I feel like saying it's yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah, could be that one. One by um Ooh, I do know this. I think it's something like Piers Robinson. I feel like saying he's got a middle name as well. But I think know. it's Piers something Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that was one of my favourite songs in that actually. Come away. Um I've actually got written another one. And don't say goodbye is the finale. Oh, so go down. Yeah, that was a lovely nice song. song. And there's uh, the song called Peter between Wendy and Peter, which yeah, is a very lovely I song. That. I've heard that. And the Lost Boys songs are really fun as well. Yeah. Do you think, I think Peter Pan is just a brilliant story to do as well. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Like, there's a few different Peter Pan things out there, mm-hmm. like plays, musicals, everything. And, yeah. Uh, it I think, it's, you know, it's... It's a wide age range that you can appeal to and to utilise yeah. on stage as well. Like, you've got the kids yeah. and then you can have, like, Mr. Darling, mm. like, the older characters. I think it's, yeah. I mean... Really- yeah. I love the Peter Pan film. If anything, I think I've grown on Peter Pan as I've got older. Yeah. Like, I appreciate it more now than I did yeah. when I was a little boy, like... And I think there's so many different, like, Peter... Like, you've got Hook and all stuff like yeah. that to do with Peter Pan as well. I think, like, there's just so many different things you can do with it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. But the, uh, the film Hook, I think it kind of draws in the uh, the adult audience yeah, a bit more because it's a bit mm-hmm. more chore and more dark. Mm-hmm. It appeals to everyone. So, yeah, they've managed to really cast the net of a wider audience there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, 
No, I think I think it'd be quite nice to do something like Peter Pan again because I think mm-hmm. it's one that audiences would want to see as well. Because yeah, again, I just feel like it never grows old. It doesn't, does it? it doesn't. No. It's it's one of those shows people are sentimental about as well because mm. of like growing up watching Disney films, yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now you said that's your first part. I'm actually going to call you out a little bit, Bea. I've got a bit of a, I got a thing. I was I got sent the program from Carrots, and it said it might be a different Megan Jones thing, Bea, <laughs> but it actually said great. you had a part in it called Alice. It was towards the bottom might... of the cast list. I think I'm, no, I, I had one line. Yeah. Now, if they, back in the day, a one-liner deserved a name, then yeah. I could be. I'll t- take it, yeah. It was something about feeding a dog, I think. I can't remember really yeah. what it was. But... It, it was towards the bottom of the cast list. I mean, it was quite I, a yeah. long cast list. I was like, yeah. ooh, wow, that's a long... <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> is that Meg Jones? Because obviously there was about three Meg Joneses in our school year, wasn't there? Yes, there were seven Megans and three Megan Jones. So I mean, it's a popular name, especially yeah. obviously for our year. So I it could be a different that, Megan Jones. I'm pretty sure it was something like French in year nine. I think all three of you were in the same class, weren't you? Yeah. So the register was just Megan Jones, Megan Jones, Megan yeah. Jones. And in maths, Great. year 10, 11, there were six oh, of us in the same class. <sighs> So when Miss Pollock would call Megan, I was like, that's not me. I'm which, not which, one, which, oh, I don't know. <laughs> which, which one? one? Not me. <laughs> that must be a nightmare then, though, if one's missing. If one's not in, it yeah. completely throws it. <laughs> but luckily, um, I was Megan Jones, Dimeno Carnal, which means Megan Jones, no middle name. No middle name, yeah. So, yeah, I was the boring one. <laughs> just, just Megan. Just Megan yeah, Jones. just Megan. But, um, so, to finish with the first of the call stars, Concerts in general, what what would you say has been your favorite shows? I mean, you've you've done a fair few now over your yeah over your, over your stint <laughs> over the any, long stint <laughs> over the long stint. Any any yeah. standouts? Um, so I'd probably go Bring It On, definitely. Great show, that. Yeah, Sister Act. <laughs> I was Yeah. Every time I think of Sister Act, I just think of uh, uni first year driving to Cardiff. Dan, I pretty much I'm to learn the words, the yeah. dance routines. Everything. Rush hour traffic. Yeah. Bus driving. I'm sat yeah. there with a book in my hand looking at the words. <laughs> I didn't even have as much to learn as you. You were one yeah. of the nuns. Yeah. Um, I'd go for 13. There's another one. Yeah. Classic. And I wasn't in great. that and I'm so gutted. Honestly. It's one that I look back at now. And I think that. I'd have to say that's probably my favourite of all time. Definitely. Yeah. It's I remember listening to it about two about two weeks ago now. And even though it's like a kid, a kid's show, you know, it's filled with kids, isn't it? There's no adults yeah. in the cast, I don't think. No. Um, it's it's got like that coming of age. Yeah. I think it's one that a lot of youngsters could listen to and really. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. I feel like good. it's relate. Relatable, yeah. <laughs> I had the Welsh in Yeti in my head. I was like, yeah. where am I going with this? I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's just one that's never going to get old because those issues are always going to be there for kids. Yeah. And like, with the changing of like, Going from like a child to a teenager, yeah, it's always going to be a thing. Yeah, and it's just I feel like it's just one that's never going to get old because the music is still quite new. It's really upbeat. Uh, just and, Robert Brown, right? Yeah, yeah. And the issues at hand, just I just don't think they change. No, it's I find it's quite an easy listen to as well. It's got like his slower songs and stuff, but it's got mm-hmm. some really it has got some really nice songs in there as well, like um. Oh, I can't think of any of the song now. What it means to be a friend, is it? Oh, yeah, that's a really Sounds nice one. I'm like, it's... you've got the lamest place in the world. And there's a song called Hey Kendra in it with yeah. um, three boys. And it's hilarious. It's so yeah. funny. And especially having like kids doing it on stage is even more funny because yeah. they actually don't get what they're talking about, really. And it's just, it's no. so funny. But no, like, every, uh, you always hear people that were in that production at the time. When they talk about call stars, they always talk about yeah. 13. It's one of those standout moments for yeah. a lot of people that were in it. And obviously, Costa has won a Norder Award as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. even even more reason to love it if it's an award winning <laughs> show. So. The award winning 13. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's well, good. Really it's a good show. Now, um, you mentioned, what was it first? Uh, Bring It On, was it? Yeah. The, now, that's one, see, that I don't think I appreciated it as much at the time, but looking no. back, I'm like, damn, we've done a Lin-Manuel Miranda well, yeah. show. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like because obviously Hamilton and the Heights have got a lot bigger and like Bring It On hasn't got as big as them, but like you still look back and think like, oh my gosh, I did a Lin Manuel Miranda show. Yeah, he wrote that. He's one of the big boys now, isn't he? Yeah, I think him, him and um, Pascal Paul, who wrote Dear Evan Hansen, they're the two, well, the three from the last say ten years that have kind of stepped up and gone, Mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah, we're we're here, we'll take over. Yeah, and they've done some great stuff. Um, it's because it's based on the film as well, and it was loosely based on the film. Yeah, but I've never seen the film. So, uh, all I all I know about the film is um Kirsten Dunst is in it who was in the um Spider Man films the okay. the first three with um Tobey Maguire but that's mm-hmm. pretty much all I know yeah, yeah I don't, I've never seen it so I I went in yeah. kind of blind and I loved it I loved it yeah I think it would have been fun to do as well like like two years later maybe for us because yeah. we were about fifteen sixteen. Oh, I can't. So we did all of it the week before, and that that was. So we would have been. That in was your 11. eleven. That was your eleven. Yeah. Six, yeah. So, so we would have been probably been about sixteen. Yeah, fifteen turning sixteen is that age gap, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so, yeah, so, yeah I, think, I feel like there's a few yeah. people that are quite a bit older than us, and they when they and I feel like yeah, we were still kind of like all one. Yes. But I think if yeah. we were a little bit older, it would have been more fun as well. But the music and stuff now, when I look back on it, I'm like, oh man, that's so good. I know, it's so well written. It is. But the rap as well. I always remember uh, KP's rap. Yeah. The, the picture of me wearing the two or three, like, do you know what we've done for the free Yeah. Bit. It's just, every time I listen to Bring It On, that, that comes on, it's like that, oh, you get hyped up and you just start like one of the pump your chest. And... I know. It's great. And obviously, yeah. you are you are not forgetting your one line in that show. Yeah. Forgetting the one line, line in that show, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I it was say. changed. It was changed, though, wasn't it? Yes, it was because it was I couldn't changed. say the line, so we changed it to "Let's go let." Like, see, I can't even say it now, and that's the <laughs> changed line. We changed it to "Let's go get some pizza." Oh <laughs> man! You, right, you try and say it in an American accent. Thank you very much. It's the it's the girl, isn't it? It's the burger. It's just the R's, like yeah. Burger, I can't. It's hard. It's hard. I think, I think, especially for us as well speakers, we, I think we're always taught to roll our R's. Yeah, and so like to I'm, not roll your R's a lot harder. Well. Burger, girl, I couldn't. Burger. And there's so many R's. There's like three R's in two words. <laughs> it was a lot. Burger, girl. Yeah. yeah. But hey, I'm no, so seen, glad it was changed. It, good show though. Good show. Really fun. Yeah, it was good fun. Really good fun. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to tour as well, isn't it? But um, obviously, yeah. it happened. Yeah, COVID. Yeah. Well, not, not but I think, I think they are touring again. They've given out their London dates yeah. now. Yeah. And I did have tickets for it, and it just said it'd been rearranged, that it wasn't cancelled. So. That's good. Fingers crossed. Um, so you said Sister Act. We briefly touched that, didn't we? That was a really yeah. good show. That was, I think that was just a fun one to do. I think it wasn't. I'll, I yeah, think, and I think I like it was the first time that like a lot of us had been seriously pushed vocally. Yes, yeah. Because it's so hard. Like singing, there was like what was it like I think there was 16 nuns altogether. Yeah. And we were four part harmony. So it was yeah. obviously two sobs, two sopranos, all women. It was hard. Yeah. And obviously all blended together as well. Yeah. But I think it taught a lot of us how to sing mm. properly. <laughs> well yeah, you have to really, didn't you? Yeah. Especially for saving it. your voices for a week as well. Do you know what I mean? I think- yeah. If you weren't singing properly by the sat, but by the Friday night, your voices would have been shattered. Shocked, yeah, yeah. But no, it was fun, fun show. I think it's one that again, uh, going into, it, I was like, oh, it'll be fun. But mm-hmm. I think there was like that. We always have that community feeling with concerts, but I think it was one of those ones. The backstage, everyone was just yeah having a good laugh. And but again, obviously, you know, kept professional and got the show mm-hmm. done. And it was a really good standard show, to be fair. Well, it's sold out a few of the nights. Like, I think yeah. that it was really well received within the community as well, which I didn't think it would have been. Yeah, I was um, a bit thinking going into it because I think a lot of people were expecting the film, obviously the, yeah. the Whoopi Goldberg film, and it, it's different. Mm-hmm. And I had worries that people were going to come in being like, oh, it's not the film. But, no, you know, people did love it, so that's good. Um, yeah, and you've got to kind of, like, get out your comfort zone. Just, yeah. work, you know, yeah. go, I know it's nice to see something you've seen before when you recognise, but... Yeah, I think a lot of people were also pleasantly surprised with 
how different it was. It was, yeah, and great. Like mm-hmm. special mention that uh, Rich, Rich, Rachel Simmons, yeah. she was just she's ridiculous. Just something man. different. She's something You're different. Just, she is just not fair that people like her have that talent. Yeah, I remember sat in the one rehearsal. It wasn't many of us there. And I just listened to her sing. I think it was fabulous. Not fabulous, baby. I can't remember what even what song it was. And no you just can't help us stay. I didn't even think I was blinking. I was just like, she she's great. Mm-hmm. She, her voice was amazing. Like every, yeah. She's one of those people. I think her in that show and um Lauren, Maxworthy singing uh, One Perfect Moment. I I, I, it on. That, I just had shivers come off my body then. <laughs> yeah. Is yes. that was the first time I remember being backstage, and obviously we got the system backstage, so we can hear what's going on. And I remember just standing there listening to it, being like, "Oh, this is incredible!" So yeah, yeah, she it's just, smashed that. Yeah, she did, and she sounded exactly like the um, recording. And that was the same with Thirteen as well. I don't know whether it's because we all loved it so much, but I think no, when I listened back to that cast recording, yeah. they sound exactly the same. It's so weird. It's- that's crazy. It's like Sophie, Marty, like it's just like everyone just kind of like it's just like listening to the Coastal's version. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what it is because Th- that must be nice as well, then though. That must be nice. The fact yeah. that you all have such like a fond memory of the show to be able to listen to the actual soundtrack and mm-hmm. kind of identify yourselves in it as well. But yeah, again, that, yeah. I think that might speak to the relatability of the show as well. The fact that yeah, you can exactly yeah. <laughs> you not only can you kind of like hear yourselves in the story but you can hear yourselves mm-hmm. in the voices as well yeah no, I was, um, yeah yeah so you mentioned um hairspray moving mm-hmm. on what would you say are some of your favorite songs you've done with call stars so the songs i'd say you'd never walk alone is definitely one of them that that is just it's like the feeling you get when you're on that stage yeah um it's just out of this world especially when you sing something like that which is such a powerful song yeah um, so for me I remember that and and Can't Help Falling In Love when we done All Shook Up those yeah. are two songs that after we'd finished mm-hmm. my body and brain needed a few seconds to kind of process everything because it was just yeah. so like oh, you almost found everything was coming out to you giving everything yeah. into the piece but it was the song itself was dragging everything out to you as well yeah. it demanded so much but it was so rewarding Mm-hmm. Of a song. I also you can't stop the beat is just to me can't beat it can't beat it. it that song's weird to me I I like the song but it's never one I'll put on but then when it comes oh. on then when it comes on though I'm like mm-hmm. oh my god it's you can't stop it's like grease lightning I yeah. can't say I put that on but when it comes on at a party I'm like knees sliding across the dance floor <laughs> I'm like yeah let's go yeah it's yeah it's one of those songs it's a bit weird but it's great um any others songs was sister act i think is a very great nice song. song and a little more homework from 13 again great song i think mm-hmm. going what you say about sister act i think what's nice about that song for you guys especially is the nuns who had so many um heavy is sister act a slower number am i thinking of the right song yeah it's the one we're all yeah. in our little dramas like i thought it was <laughs> just, so i think it's yeah. quite nice you've been so high energy throughout the entire mm-hmm. show to be able to have this sit down moment yeah. as a group of women as well on the stage you know being so mm-hmm. close as a group the rehearsals yeah and it that's was... the thing like you are all just your friends yeah and sitting around with your friends on the stage is just it's the best feeling ever yeah do you think that was part of the reason why you enjoyed that song so much as well then though not just oh, for yeah, the, definitely. the song itself but the thing yeah yeah and like obviously Rachel singing it helped a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just sounds but... like yeah, we need to carry on. Just take, take the stitch. <laughs> but yeah, I think just sitting there in your little PJs, yeah. just complete like you like. It's a, a vulnerable feeling, but it's so nice just sitting there, listening to yeah. someone like that sing, and you're all just together, and you kind of like it's those moments on stage that kind of hit home. You're like, I love this. Yeah, like, this is what I live for. Yeah, and like knowing that like everyone in that theatre is like watching everything that you're doing like they're so like involved in what you're doing mm. and I feel like that's when you're kind of like wow this is this is my life and I love it I find as well those moments where you're on stage and you are taking part but you're not having to give I wouldn't say give everything because you always give everything when you're on stage but you can kind of yeah. watch a little bit mm-hmm. I remember when we done um 
Jesus Christ Superstar, we were all lying, sleeping on the stage while Iwan Imu Davis was singing Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. But I remember lying there with just one eye open. I'm yeah. to watch and listen. and There's just things like that. But mm -hmm. I th I'm not going to lie. Yours is just that, like that feeling. Yeah. Like with the girls, especially. For me, with the boys, it's got to be take that when we've done uh, Rule the yeah. World. When we've done Rule the World. Rule the world. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. That was so much fun. I don't think I've ever enjoyed doing a song so much in my mm. life. It was, I think, especially at the time, I was only about fifth, like 16, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm still quite new to call stars, yeah. really. I was still quite young. So to do that show with a lot of the older boys as well, because then it was yeah. me and Reese, and then like Dan, KP, James, mm -hmm. and Damon. So, you know, we were kind of like under their wing. It's yeah. Nice, that song. Yeah, um, I remember standing on side stage, be like, oh, look at the boys. Oh, look at them go. Oh, and we got to do all like the the yeah. boy band moves, all that yeah. jazz. It was great. It was brilliant. Um, and then a little more homework again. Just Yeah. Just a hard hit there, isn't it? That's one I just every time I listen to it, I don't even want to sing along. I just like putting it on and like oh yeah. And I remember nice. when we did it, we were all so we'd all like kind of come on in like dribs and drabs, and we yeah. all just stood at the end, like it was I think it must have been like the, the last kind of verse through to the end. We all just stood in a line. Yeah. And it was just like a wall of sound of yeah. all like these like eleven to like sixteen year old kids just singing at you. Yeah, and like my mother and father always say that like because of how young we all were and how good the show was like that number was just like oh my gosh like wow that's a wall yeah. of sound coming from such young kids and yeah. a really good song as well mm. yeah it's I almost as it. if the, the noise shouldn't have been coming out to you yeah like you guys shouldn't have been able to produce that so yeah like especially as a parent as well, to see your kids in a song like that, you know, mm -hmm. at that age, just seeing all kids as well pushing themselves. Yeah. And you could max. tell that, like, we were all just loving it, like, because yeah. it got a little bit slower towards the end, and then, like, it picks up again. And I think that, like, it's a really good song to stand and sing and to show yeah. off the talent that you have got on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm um, talking about favourites. What would you say is your favourite Call Stars memory or you know one, one of your favourite Call Stars memory because you know you've been there for a while now there's bound to be several yeah. really I gotta say Hairspray is a show of favourites for me yeah there was there's three moments in Hairspray that really did I don't know how I kept my cool on the stage but this <laughs> one I've actually got tears come to my eyes and I thought of thinking about it <laughs> so it was just after we'd done Nicest Kids and really hard moment, really hard, like, song, heavy, really yeah. dancey. Grab, all grab your really bump at the end. Yeah. And me and Brogan <laughs> ended up on our knees. Yeah. Now, obviously, we kind of had, like, the 60s dresses on, so they were, like, kind of, like, knee to shin type height. Yeah. And we were, like, characters on, obviously, and <laughs> Brogan got up, but her shoe was stuck in her dress. So this is the Friday night, right? And I feel like yeah. on Friday nights, things just go a bit on a yeah. weird kind of way. They, they things do. just happen that never usually would happen. Yeah. So his shoe got stuck and Dan was going straight into singing. I think it, 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 it takes two. It takes two, yeah. I think it was that song. Yeah, because that's boys had to stand in a group and do all the hip yeah. movement side. Yeah. Eyes, oh, oh, so all I felt was, was Brogan's hand kind of like grip into my arm like this really hard. And I yeah. turned to her and she was like, oh my God, oh my God. And we had, so we were like in the middle of the stage. We had to walk like yeah. in front of Dan and round. And we had to all sit on the floor. And all you could just see was Brogan hopping with just one leg because obviously the other leg was stuck in the dress. <laughs> but I kind of like tried to go in front of us, but we wouldn't see it. But I could yeah. see people in the front row just absolutely howling because she was like gripping into me, trying to like hop across the stage. It was just, and a belt fell off that night as well. Oh. So Dan ended up then, you know what he's like when it comes to improv. So we kind of picked it up and kind of just like flung it to us. And it was like, yeah. thanks, Dan. Tried to put it back <laughs> on it. She was so embarrassed, but it was hilarious. Like, yeah. I just, it was, and we sat down. I tried to like unclip her then. I was like, it's okay, Brogan, we're okay. It's, no one saw it. <laughs> Whereas everyone saw it. But it was so funny. And that yeah. night, I think it was the night that Jen walked into the process. <laughs> Which is so hilarious. See, every time I think of hairspray, I just think of that because it was just out of nowhere, wasn't it? 
but it was like right in front of me and Brogan again. So <laughs> me and Brogan were you, and they literally just walked straight in front of us, and you could just see her go. And then Kaya just kind of went Doof, behind her. It was so funny. <laughs> I just that night, just I don't know what was going on, what was in the water. I think Dan ended up calling Zoe. Um, no, Zoe ended up calling Dan seaweed, and he was like, "My name's Link, but it's okay." <laughs> <laughs> Changed yeah, the plot. Yeah, but it was funny. It was a great, you know, and it's, I don't yeah. think anyone actually off stage notices because. Well, that's good though. Like people just, I think, you know, when people like I watch things and don't realize people make mistakes. Yeah, and then someone you can be like, did you see that person do that? I'm like, no, I didn't. Yeah. I feel like, I yeah. I, but my, I, like I said, her mama was like, did you notice anything going wrong? She was like, no, I didn't see a thing. I was like, good. That's great. <laughs> I think that's the worst thing as well, though. When you do something wrong, Oh. You know straight away, and you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But nobody notices, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh thank god. But you spend the rest of the show panicking like yeah. crazy, thinking, oh my god, everyone saw me do that mistake. Everyone knew I made a mistake there. But there was one, oh, sh- there was one pant though, actually. I forgot about this. Um, that Sleeping Beauty. So there were three fairies. I was one of the fairies, yeah. and we did. Um, I'm so excited as like the cast number at the end. And we had like, so we had like these little fairy costumes on. It was like a top and a skirt. Mm. And my skirt came undone on stage. So Derek was behind me, luckily. <laughs> and he had to hold my skirt because I couldn't do it back up. And whenever yeah. we turn, he'd turn with me instead. <laughs> so we just both just go around in a circle. Otherwise, <laughs> that skirt was coming off. That skirt was coming off. But yeah, it was really funny. Was, was that on the Friday night by chance as well? I mean, it may have been. <laughs> Pancho's a long week, so it could have been the first, it could have been the last, it could have been in the middle. But it probably was a Friday. And now for a quick word from the sponsor of today's podcast. So, this episode of the After Show podcast is sponsored by the one and only Grey Trees Brewery. Grey Trees Brewery are a multi-award winning, and I mean, yeah, not just award winning, but multi-award winning craft brewery based in Aberamon, Aberdeen, in the South Wales Valleys. Grey Trees Brewery supply cask and bottle beers right across the UK, and as if that isn't great enough, they also have their very own unique bar in Aberdeen Town Centre, the National Tap. The National Tap is open Wednesdays to Sundays and will be reopening on April the 28th when the COVID restrictions are lifted. So go check out the National Tap in Aberdeen Town Centre where they have a huge range of craft beers, ciders, classy spirits and a good selection of wine and cocktails. I mean, I for one cannot wait to go there one evening and grab a drink. Um, You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or you can visit the online shop at greytreesbrewery.com That's greytreesbrewery.com All the links will be in the description below so go check them out, go show them some love and um, yeah, back to the podcast. Now um, to move on from your experience in Call Stars to just musical theatre in general Mm -hmm. um, What's your favorite musical? Can you cut well? Can you narrow it down? Do you think? I can, but I feel like I feel like you'll be the same as me. I got different favors for different categories. Yeah, I got different ones for different days as well. Yeah. I, if I'm in a good mood, I'll be like, I listen to this. Whereas yeah. if I've had a hard day, I listen to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Wicked is my all time, all round favorite. Favorite. Yeah. I don't know whether it's because I've seen it quite a few times, like, like I saw it on um, Broadway and stuff like that. I don't know whether it's yes. just like a nostalgia type thing. Yeah, I, don't know. I get what you mean, yeah. But like, it's just like, you've got the big ballads in it. Like, she defies gravity. <laughs> like, this she, flies. she flies. She flies. She flies like flies. you have. Maybe I you have that, you have that in common. <laughs> yeah. But I think that like, that's like my all round everything taken into consideration like yeah. the spectacle that's the right word spectacle isn't it spectacle yeah, yeah yeah like the music like the costumes everything like that i think that i think yeah wicked 100 percent. it's a good show i i was when i think of wicked as well i think of when we went on the, um, a school trip in year 12 was it the the la san fran one. Oh yeah 
We were, am I right in saying we were supposed to see Wicked in San Francisco, but then we ended up seeing an the improv, improv show. show. Yeah. Still I mean, the improv show was like funny. It was fun. It was oh, yeah. know, an experience. Yeah. But when you know... Uh, yeah. When, like, when, when someone dangles Wicked in front of your face, then goes, no, 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 I'm going to take that away and I'm give you an improv show. But it was really yeah. fun, and I'm glad we did it. It was because really I've never fun, came yeah. up before, and I probably won't see one again. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's one of those things that, in the moment, you're like, oh, damn it, we're not seeing Wicked. But I think when we were there, it was nice to see something different yeah. than something, you know, a show you'd only see in San Francisco, because obviously they yeah, were definitely. just a San Francisco company. But mm-hmm. that was a good trip as well, to be fair. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely loved it. I actually watched. So I watched, have you ever seen New Girl before? This is kind of off topic, mm-hmm. but not off topic. So there's a program called New Girl. Yeah. It's very good, very fun. Seven seasons get into it um, and they film in the pool that of the hotel that we stayed in in LA uh, Sportsman's Lodge yeah and also in Modern Family they film in the hotel rooms no way so yeah so this I've seen two different like seasons of things yeah, both filming in that cool. hotel that's what I, was, I remember them saying when we were there about um, the hotel yeah, there was something then, filming there there was something filming literally like two blocks away wasn't mm-hmm. there because I remember the bus had to detour the one day when we were going yeah. To um the Hollywood Boulevard, the all the stars and stuff, and then we yeah. had to be to work. Yeah, that yeah. was great. That was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, trip. have we got any others? Any other favorites? I mean, how long have you got? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> so obviously, I feel like Hamilton is just Hamilton. Hamilton. I think it came yeah. along at the right time for us as well oh. as a good. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think like the music of it, obviously being rap mm-hmm. and stuff. We were what. 17 when that came out I think so yeah yeah around that yeah age. I saw I've seen it on the West End twice and each time it gets better and better better yeah. and better and I know the weekend it came out on um, Disney Plus because there's a production of it on Disney Plus mm-hmm. you can watch Um, I think I watched it about six times in that first weekend oh yeah I woke I woke up at nine o'clock so I could watch it when it was mm-hmm. released I woke up early on the day because I know I'd finished uni for the summer and obviously yeah. you know it was during the pandemic so I didn't have much reason to get up early but that day I set my alarm to get up early and I watched it about three times that first day just because I wanted to know everything and mm-hmm. and there's also you can play really good drinking games to Hamilton as well you can but if you've done drinking games you'd probably get absolutely oh, we, yeah, we did it in the Harlequins <laughs> it was, wasn't long before shift before Christmas because of Covid yeah. and I didn't remember leaving Worthy though. It was, it, was a good, it was a good night. Did you do a shot every time they said, I am not throwing away my shot? Well, that was the plan. But then you didn't have enough time to, to drink your shot, <laughs> to go and get another one, to come back, and then to yeah. take it again. And you couldn't Especially, line them all up because he just, he says so many. So we Especially didn't my shot. Then. I mean, there's a song called My Shot. So yeah. you would have been doing a lot of my shots, even just in that song, let alone oh, the rest yeah, of the Yeah, 100%. Um, I think another favourite has got to be 9 to 5. Um, See, yeah. that's one I didn't know a lot about until you mentioned Amber Davis singing uh, Get Out and Stay Out and mm. I remember listening to that so and good I listened to it now and I'm just like yes you go girl go on yeah you and go, she's go. so small yeah it doesn't like, make she's sense just, it's so short so like just petite she but is. she's got a belt of a voice oh. She's got one hell of a voice. Yeah, like her riffs, like the belt in up top, like her range. Yeah. She's just unreal. Absolutely unreal. Welsh, Welsh as well. Aye, right. come around uh, this. Come around this. She um, just competed in Estelle the Wads. She did, Wad, and she actually did all of her um, education in Welsh as well. Yes, she did. And um, I would say just for people that she was on Love Island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, but what? Three, four years ago now? Must be about Yeah, it must have been about four years ago. But I yeah, I think okay. that it's I think it's so good that she hasn't used her Love Island platform just no. to be like an influencer. She's yeah, gone back so to what she more. trained in and what she wanted yeah. to do. And she's doing that. And I just think that's I think that's so good. I think for like yeah. to, like for young kids as well to see that going on something like Love Island doesn't mean you just sit there and not I didn't sit, I'm not saying that, like that but yeah, to have like mean, yeah sit on your Love Island fame then and use that to have jobs like yeah. she's just gone back and done theatre which is what she probably would have done if yeah. she hadn't gone on there anyway 
I th- think is, you know, I know some people were kind of thinking, oh, this is just a stunt casting to get people in to watch her. Mm-hmm. And then she sang and it was like, uh, yeah. no, that's okay. not why she got the part. I see all. why she got the part. Yeah, she's yeah. incredible. But mm-hmm. um, no, I think if anyone hasn't listened to Get Out and Stay Out, especially Amber, they need yeah. to give that a listen. I prefer the newer version of the cast recording than the original one that came out. Yeah, the original one is not... I don't think it's a London cast recording. I don't think the original is. No, it's not. Um, But the newer one is the London cast recording. And it's Caroline Sheen. I think that's her name. Uh, Yes. um, Is on. So she's also Welsh. Yeah. Um, So two out of the three main women were Welsh. Welsh. Which was... Not complaining there. Great to be seen. Um, Any other favourites? Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, now that's the show I could speak about all day. It's, it's just great. I there's words no fail. Words. words fail. Words do fail. <laughs> words fail. Like they say, words like they say in the show, words fail. I think what's what I love about Dear Evan Hansen as well is not they do a lot more than just cast cast recordings and stuff. They yeah. do like the uh the vigil with Ben Levi Ross and Taylor mm-hmm. Trench. Uh, they're both actors who've played um, Evan and they're in a relationship with one another and they sang the song um, Only Us mm-hmm. and just they, they've done so many good things with different cast versions there was the one last year with the four Evans singing yeah. together um, Jordan Fisher singing If I Could Tell Her his voice is insane I know I just I can't go with him um, Andrew Barr Feldman as well he was what mm-hmm. 17 when he got the part yeah, I think he was. Uh, think might be 17. sixteen when he first said this part. Was he seventeen? I think, I think he was sixteen when he got yeah. cast, and then seventeen, and then 17 when he yeah. done the part. Yeah, that's insane because it's such a demanding show. Yeah, and I think that like it touches on a lot of things that he could have been going through at his age. Yeah, like obviously Ben Pratt was the um the originator of the role of yeah, Ev, and and he was a bit old at the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but you know, for Andrew, he would have been kind of possibly living through those moments. Yeah, and exactly. It is. Not only is it technically a hard show on the voice and stuff, but it's it's an emotionally heavy show oh, as well. It's, it's heavy to watch, let alone to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- I was listening today as well as it actually happens to um, Mallory Bechtel. She was the second Zoe. Zoe, oh. um, and oh, she's great. There's a video of her singing Requiem on YouTube. Mm. Great. Um, and on the deluxe album as well, the deluxe version of the album with his extra songs. Yeah, she's got a song called "Hiding in Your Hands." Oh, that's the one and that's I, not actually in the show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Mallory, and her voice is just so soft as ours. Well. It's just so yeah. nice, and it's just a great show. It's one I could listen to over and over again. Yeah, and never give out of it. And I mean, you will be found. I know. It's just such a emotive song, you know. Oh, big and time. It just makes me cry every time I listen to it. Yeah. Every time. No, well, and I went, like, to, I went to see it with um, James, Dyer, and yeah. my friend Lori and her friend Emma were also there. So we kind of went together, but then we sat separately. Sat separately. Yeah. And they were like two rows behind us. And they said that all they could see from me and James was going... <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'd need to go and it. see it on my own. Oh, yeah, but you can't go and see with people, especially no, when me and James I, are together. We just cry and cry and cry. I, I, I have an ugly crying face as well. I'm not like a... I'm probably like... Yeah, like a I'm tears. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, just, time. it's out of this world. Out of yeah. this world. Have you read the novel of it as well? Yeah. I, I remember finish... I read... You know where the You Will Be Found section is? Mm-hmm. I read that on the train and I read the ending on the train coming home from uni and I was just like... Oh, okay. sorry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. It's it. mad how different the musical is to the book, though. Yeah, but they're like, both great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, you get the, like, you get the gist of the musical while reading the book, but, like, there's a lot of things that are different. Yeah. I think but what's nice as well, though, when you read the book, you mm-hmm. kind of know where you are through the sh- um, where you are, like, song one yeah. as well. You'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, at this point, this song comes in. Yeah. The fact... I, I think Dear Evan Hansen is going to be a show that stays around. I think it's oh, success. And I, I posted on our Facebook page the other day, um, the After Show podcast with Carl Stars. Go check us out. Um, 
we were doing a game musical of the day, decade by decade. So a show from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, Northern Stands. And for this, I said, it's become a lot more than a musical as well. Yeah. It's done so much for so many people. Like the things you'd see on social media, people posting about the show and how it helped them and like the charity yeah. outreach work they do. And it's, it's evolved into something much more than just a stage oh, yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Well, which... this, this is the thing, like the subjects they talk about is, is bigger than them. And yeah. people relate on so many different levels. Yeah. And I think they expected when they did that show for those things to come with it and like a responsibility yeah. in some way of allowing people to to come to that show and to like to feel free and also feel like they're normal if they if they feel that way and like that is that it is normal to feel things that they feel in that show and to have issues that they have in that show yeah so very uh, relatable and normal uh, that that thing you just said now about uh, responsibility like i'm working on a piece for uni now that's quite heavy and i know that i've got a responsibility to do and just me alone and yeah like nowhere near as many people are going to see my show as are going to see dear evan hansen but like i think they knew at one point that so many people were going to see this show and so many people were going to be touched and affected so yeah. they ha- they probably had to make sure that there was something in place oh yeah 100 uh, percent it's such a great show. Mm-hmm. I could, I could listen to it all day, and not just the cast recording. Again, the things they released on YouTube. Yeah. The, the deluxe album they done with the extra songs. Um, when they did it in that, um, when they did it in that concert not that long ago on TV, that was yes. really really good. Yeah, and um, yeah. obviously, yeah, there's a film coming out of it. Yes. With film with Ben Platt. Exciting times. Yes. With Ben Platt, which is mm-hmm. I think it's nice to see him. Obviously, stepping away from the part and letting other people take the reign, but mm-hmm. also getting his credit on the big screen as yeah, as Evan, which is mm-hmm. nice. Um, any other shows you stand out that you haven't spoke about? I mean, I got another three. So obviously, you got Miss Saigon, which is just amazing. Aladdin, which is more of like spectacle, kind of like the flying carpet and everything. Seeing that, and yeah. waitress is again amazing. I think Waitress is is similar to Dear Evan Hansen, but it's not as well. It's got like his fun songs, like yeah. Dear Evan Hansen got Sincerely Me. Mm-hmm. Um, Waitress has got, oh, what's the song? The Negative. The Negative and, and the one that Joe Sugg sang. Oh, oh, oh no, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. I almost added them. Uh, I can't think of it. She's the... I'm not going. No, I'm not going. I th- that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I, I've gone blank. That's that's gonna bug me now. I don't know. I can sing it. Yeah, I I I really got it in my head, but I just that's cannot think of the name me. of that song. Yeah, but again, it's a show. This guy's punchy songs. Yeah, but it's also guys more lighthearted moments. I think they make the punchier moments mm-hmm. hit more because it kind of like lets your guard down a bit, and then yeah. Hits you with the guy and you're like, oh, why are you yeah, doing this to me? Yeah. Um, Another show that I cried in. Well, uh, you got to go backstage as well for that, didn't you? We did. We got to meet yeah. the lovely Joe Sag. Joe Sag. Which was really Thank fun. I. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> to be fair, um, Joe Sag, obviously we mentioned Amber Davis being a stunt cast. I haven't said that about Joe because he's just done um, Strictly. Strictly, me? yeah. And everyone thought, ah, oh, you know, between Strictly and his YouTube following... Mm-hmm. It's just for the fans, but he turned out to be a success, didn't he? People oh, yeah, seemed he was, to he enjoy was, him. So I was really shocked. I also saw um Neil from the isn't Neil from the Between Us uh, Tall Blake one? Harrison. Blake, yeah. Blake Harrison. I saw him and they were both completely on par with each other. There, there was yeah. hardly any differences. And yeah, I think I think there's a lot, a lot of sun casting goes on, but they obviously wouldn't cast those people if they weren't good enough. No, no, if they didn't have the time, they weren't just going to go, oh, it's fine, we'll get people in to see yeah. them, we'll have him in for two or three months, and mm-hmm. you know, go. Yeah. Um, But yeah, again, Miss Saigon, as you mentioned, great show. That's, to try and state that standout shows in us, standout songs in our show is so hard, there's so many good ones. I know. It's, it's just, yeah. You, you'll say one, then you'll say another, then you'll say another, and another, another. And the scene I've, they have with the helicopter is the, is oh, the end of Act One. 
and again that's a spectacle you it's, it's, it's got to be seen to be believed really the way they do it's, it it's like a it's like a phantom with a chandelier dropping yeah it's that, just the helicopter yeah but, like, for me, one that it, I it'll always be we die for me every time mm. we've sung we've sung that as well and that's another one where you can feel the, yeah. the haze on your arm stand and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I've heard a Welsh version of We Die sung by um, Only Men Allowed and John Owen yeah. Jones, but I can't find it anyway. And I'm like, mm. did I dream? Did I dream <laughs> this? Have I made this up? Or, But yeah, I'm pretty sure they've done that in Welsh. So you're in Welsh, just the words in Welsh and the music itself is, oh yeah. man, incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously that was your favourite, those were some of your favourite musicals. Are there any favourite songs that might be like, separate or from those shows again so my favorite song i thought if i'm gonna give wicked my favorite musical i should also have my favorite song from wicked from wicked and i Um, feel like regardless like of like wicked being my favorite or not i think that this is such a good song so i've gone for for good from wicked which is the last but one song yeah i I listened through wicked the other day and that like Defying Gravity and everything that came on. And you want to sing along, but with this, I was, again, I just wanted to sit back and listen yeah. to the words, mm-hmm. like some of the words, um, especially I think now with the relationship we have with the company is that with that song, mm-hmm. like just the words in at the beginning, the, you know, yeah. uh, it's just incredible, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, just, just for a bit of context for people, we're listening who aren't from call stars um for good is a song we sung at a memorial service was it yeah like a yeah. concert concert thing in um Merthyr for mike jones michael jones who was um i've actually written this down because i know we've we kind of chat before we make about like the yeah. songs and shows and stuff just to have a bit of structure to the show so we're not completely free balling um so we've wrote this down with um well derek wrote this down and then i've just kind of thing there um, so Mike came to Call Stars in 1995 as a favour to help us out with the rehearsal of the show, Irene. He's only supposed to play for two rehearsals. I think he'd done a lot more than two rehearsals over the years. I think it's probably closer to 2000 than two. Um, but remained with us for over 20 years, becoming a life member of the company. Um, Mike initially joined as our accompanist, but a year later in 1996, took out the bat on his MD for our annual pantomime which happened to be uh, Cinderella. His first musical show as MD then was Anything Goes in May of 1996. Uh, Mike remained as MD with Call Stars until he decided to take some time out and asked for a sabbatical leave in following our annual pantomime in February 2013. He returned as MD in 2016 to direct his favourite show, Jesus Christ Superstar, and then later in the autumn of 2016, Hairspray. Uh, but then following this, through the pressure of work, Mike decided that he would step down from the post but remained on call if needed. And you know, to be fair, quite often we'd walk into rehearsal and you'd see Mike sat there by the piano as if he'd never been away. Um, and then Mike returned as musical director for a Christmas concert in aid of Save the Children at Green Street Chapel Aberdeen in December 2018. Um, and this was the last thing he did with us before his untimely passing in March in 2019. Um, Mike. Michael, Mr. Jones, as he was to yourself as well. You know, he was a teacher in primary school. Uh, I, you know, he was a big part of Call Stars and he still is as well. Do you know what I mean? Just because of his oh, yeah. passing. Um, you know, a lot of people love Mike. Um, he's missed every day by everyone in the company and everyone who knew him. So, yeah, we thought, you know, pay respect to Yeah. Mike was a key part of Call Stars for, what, 20 years? Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, I think, again, mentioning Mike and that song, and I think since that concert, that song has meant so much more to us as well. Yeah, and it's hard to it's hard to listen to it again. It is. Um, because the words are just, until you put them into kind of like that type of context and to, context. to sing them for a, a specific reason, you don't actually yeah. think about them as much, whereas... Yeah. Like, I've actually got, it's behind you right now. I'm not going to get it out. But it's a photo of, it's a like a, like a uh, music transcript. And it's yeah. a heart. And it's got the words of for good. And then it's got for oh. good on the bottom. Um, 
and I just think until you put um that song to to a meaning for like you as a person yeah yes yeah, a crier I cry all the time when I listened to it before but yeah. now it's it's even more different even more yeah yeah I, I think it's different tears as well then though as well isn't yeah. it? it's not like a yeah. tears of it is it is a t- tear of sadness but a happiness as well I think mm-hmm. it's a bit of both and like again as you mentioned the lyrics just at the beginning with with Glinda you know that I've already said that people come into our lives for a reason mm-hmm. just that alone is like whew. yeah and I think that if I hadn't have known to me Mr Jones yeah as long as I had I I, I don't think I probably would have been in co-stars because it was yeah a lot of him and knowing that he was doing it and I was like oh well I don't kind of feel as lonely yeah going into it knowing that I knew him yeah. um and he helped me so much like he'd played in my singing exams and stuff like that yeah. like he was an amazing man to everyone and I think that he was he made Costas Romy on him oh big time big time I think everyone's got a memory with Mike as well mm-hmm. like at least one memory I think for me I, I think I might be the only person who remembers this but I remember the um auditions for when we done Baby and the Beast the Panto I always remember this he was sat on the floor by the way the radiator was because obviously uh, Panto auditions we don't do singing do we and he was just sat there and I um I done my pieces and then he mentioned to me about auditioning for the Beast and I hadn't read I hadn't planned on auditioning for that he just sat there on the floor legs out flat back against the radiator and he said that he said it to me in Welsh as well because quite often I'd speak to Mike in Welsh yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. All right, I'll give it a go. Not thinking anything of it, really. And then I, I remember waking up the next morning, seeing I got that part and being like, oh, oh I think I need to listen to Mike more often. <laughs> yeah. I think like every time I think of that show now, like I've always been fond of that show just because the part I had and how fortunate I was to play the Beast and Beauty and the Beast. And I always have a special place in my heart for that show. But that memory now as well, I think, mm-hmm. getting that part with that memory attached is just... Yeah, and I think, like you said, like this, he would like would always speak to anyone from Rido Island Welsh. Yeah. And like I never knew, do you call him Mike or do you call him Mr Jones? <laughs> Mr Jones, yeah. Do I speak Welsh or do I speak English? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think he was also really proud of that we are like quite a heavily Welsh-speaking company. Yes, there's a lot of and... people in the company that speak Welsh. I think that he would take the opportunity to speak Welsh to anyone in the company just to make sure that we kind of kept it alive as well. That's the thing, yeah. Well, yeah, we did, you know, we've done Welsh songs in concerts, you know, we've mm-hmm. done the Heather V every time we do that, uh, Seo Gan at Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. There's so many good, there's so many good things, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, any other songs you've got then that kind of stand I mean, out? I have a lot. <laughs> I'll probably go um Let It Go is one of them. Good. Is it different in the musical compared to the um classical yes. yeah, the film? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so in the musical it's actually lower. Oh. Yeah. So it's low at the beginning. It's low. Yeah. Um and at the end she does a lot of riffing. The words are the same. Yeah. It's just in the lower key and yeah. the end kind of she takes it higher. Oh cool. And it's like, oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> like you no, did damn, not expect no, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and I was meant to go and see it last December. But obviously COVID. Yeah. Um, so then we booked it for April come in. Nice. COVID. So now we've had it rearranged for September. Yeah. So fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah. Yeah. So then I've avoided on all social medias to see um the dress change. Yeah. Because I want to see it in person first before I see like the different because like on like all like YouTube and like TikTok and stuff, they yeah. show like the perspective of like the person taking it off and then how they do it. And I don't want to see that yet. No. I want to see the change and then see how they do it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, for me, Frozen is uh monster, is it? The name of the song. That's a good song. Really Stop good. Done it. Oh, it is big time. Yeah. Um. I know you've said 
I think you mentioned you can't stop the beat as well. And I'm pretty sure yeah. I remember you mentioned that before. Yeah. Again, yeah. I think it's just one of those, for me, it's one that I love the song. I can't say it's one of my favourites, but it's one of those that when it comes on, you're just like... Yeah, you just can't help but dance to it, can you? It's contagious. It does just take over your body, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, any others? I'm telling you from Dream Girls. I'm not shocked with that at all. I'm not shocked one bit with that. Yeah, I think so. When I went to see it, I was in the first. The first time I saw it was in the second row, and I saw Amber Riley do it. Nice. And like, so I was watching a Glee video the other day actually, and to see that she's come from Glee when she was so young, singing yeah. and telling you on Glee, to then doing it on the West That's End, I was just like, "Honey, you've come so far! <laughs> like, look at it. you go! And you've made it." She just put her like everything she had oh, and like being exactly. in the second row you could see a spit <laughs> like, yes, honey, the splash on, zone. bring it all to <laughs> me and I remember I went to so I'm in Meg James now mothers um and I we went to the toilet straight after and I was like I need to breathe like I feel like I've just sang that song <laughs> like it was just so you were just like I didn't breathe the whole time like I was just like yeah oh my gosh and then so the last concert I saw before COVID was the Motown um, concert in Cardiff, and it was with the oh, nice. Novello, I think that's what you say, Novello Orchestra, which Nathan, our MD, um, he was in it as well. So we went, we went to watch, it was me, Elle, and a couple of others. We went to watch it, and um, Marisha Wallace sang it. Yeah. And again, we were so close to her, because I've seen her do it in Dream Girl, but I was quite far away. We yeah. were in like the fourth row, I think, in the in um the millennium. Yeah. And me and I also just holding on to each other's hands, just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, she's doing it again. She's doing it. Yeah. And it was just like that song, especially with two like powerhouses like that singing it. Just can't beat them, man. I, I think it's a song, it. it's a song that demands so much of them, but because oh. they're throwing out so much, you're having to take all of that in as well. So as oh. an audience member. I know to be able to take all this, especially quite close as well, because you're yeah. taking in like the facial expression and the pain mm-hmm. you can see in. So yeah, that must be quite a lot to take in as well as an audience. Yeah, member, so. and like you can just tell. Like I was looking around the theatre and I went to see the Millennium, and everyone was just like, "Oh my gosh, look at you go!" And then at the end, we all like, like the and she didn't even finish our last note, and the whole yeah. theatre just like roared. Everyone That's stood up, clapping, screaming, and she just walked off like. I just did that. that was Mike, probably like Mike drop more, man. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was out of this world. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a hard hit of me. Brilliant. Another um, one I cry in. <laughs> so the the message of tonight's pod, the, today's podcast is the Meg cries. Meg does <laughs> cry. Like Hello. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gents. It's um, Yayan from the future of the of that recording, not from your future, from your past, but the future of that guy and Megan. Anyway, basically, pretty much, me and Meg had so much to talk about that we've ended up speaking a lot longer than we thought we originally would. So, we've decided to actually cut this into two episodes. So you'll have part one, which you've just watched, and then you'll have a part two, which will be coming out soon. Maybe next week, maybe the week after, we don't know, but we will keep you posted on social media. So, if you enjoyed part one of me and Meg having a chat about musical theatre, why not join us for part two when that gets released. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed part one, and yeah, come back for part two soon. (laughs)